you've created a monster. My take on what happens when the golden child grows up. So I'm spending a little time today thinking about the story of Cain and Abel. And I'm using my imagination here because the Bible never says that Cain was favored or the golden child or anything like that. But in Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, the Lord God comes to Cain because he can see in his heart that he's very angry and God knows the heart of us. So he was basically pleading with Cain that sin is lurking and crouching at his door and he should overcome sin and um, just don't be angry about the fact that his sacrifice wasn't accepted and Abel's was accepted, but just do the right thing and everything will be fine, pretty much, is what he was saying. But Cain was overcome by his anger and rage, and he still took the life of his younger brother Cain, I'm um, sorry, Abel, in the fields. So it wouldn't surprise me if Cain was the golden child. And I'll tell you why. I am a survivor, a scapegoat survivor um, of narcissistic abuse, family structure. I had to study these terms and understand them as part of my healing because growing up in a toxic family structure, finding out in life that it's actually common and it's something that a lot of people have experienced and many have overcome. Um, I found many videos on YouTube and some books on it and it was very helpful for me to see that this is a very toxic family structure and my opinion that Cain was a golden child is because of his unexcusable rage um, for his younger brother, Abel, being favored, even just for a moment. So golden children are, they're treated in an elevated position. They are entitled. Um, I guess you could call them spoiled brats. They have a, this, this is something that the Escape the uh, the abuser. I'm sorry, the narcissistic parent created in them um, by placing them on this pedestal. They do not take kindly to hearing the word no or being told that anyone else is being placed on a pedestal as well. So the narcissist or the abuser in a situation where there's a golden child and a scapegoat whether they realize it or not, whether it's done intentionally or not, they have a way of triangulating those two parties. So if in a family structure, Cain would be the golden child and Abel would be the scapegoat. And when Cain was told no, and even even from God himself, let alone, you know, this is something that he experienced through his parents, I'm saying. But when God himself felt that Abel did a better job, he couldn't handle it. And my experience in life is that's what happens to the adult golden child. When the golden child grows up, they often will be successful because they have a high sense of self. Their self-esteem is through the roof um, to the point of delusion sometimes. Um, they do have a higher chance of becoming narcissists themselves. This is proven. Um, psychologically, it's proven. And they also have a great way of masking their internal rage. So where as a child or a teen, they may react with screaming and temper tantrums. As an adult, they have learned 
to maneuver their way through life in a much more coy manner. So all that rage and hostility at the individual that told them no, it's still present, but it's hidden. So if you are unfortunate enough to get in the way of an adult golden child, then they will do whatever they have to do to get you out of the way. If you're in a position, let's say a work environment, if you have a position that they want, they will do what they have to do to remove you from that position behind the scenes in order to get what they want. And if that's a partner, if you have somebody in your life that you're involved with, a partner, if they want your partner, they will do and will likely do inappropriate things because they have a very high sense of self and they lack empathy. When they want something, that's all they can see. But this monster that they've become, this monster was created by the narcissist. And it's a very dangerous outcome because where the scapegoat has to learn if the scapegoat survives through that turbulent childhood and young adult life, if they make it into adult life and they do all the things and they learn how to love themselves and they work on their healing and they get rid of any um, personal toxic traits and things that they're doing to themselves that are destructive, whether it's drinking or excessive anything, Basically, when the scapegoat draws close to God and hides in the shelter of the Almighty and the Lord heals the scapegoat's wounds, the scapegoat is a well-rounded individual that not only has empathy for others, but also has empathy and respect for themselves because they've gone through a lot in life. Whereas the golden child is an entitled person who truly inwardly feels that they're better than others because this is the way they were treated throughout their formative years. They become a, they could become a dangerous person because outside of God intervening, I don't really see them not becoming a narcissist or not becoming an abuser themselves. So on the surface, yeah, the golden child they could have what appears to be have it all. They may have money or they may be successful or all these things that appear to be good on the surface. But they're really a monster inside because they were trained to be one by another monster, the narcissist or the abuser. So I wouldn't trade places with the golden child. I wouldn't want it any other way. First of all, I have to say that this must be in the ultimate grand scheme of things. God's plan for me was to go through the things that I went through to make me the person that I am. But I wouldn't trade places with the golden child. But there is hope for the golden child because in the story of Cain and Abel, when God came to Cain and pleaded with him and said, pretty much this is what God was saying. You have two options. You can look at yourself at this moment and see the rage inside of your heart and see who you are. And you can submit to what's right or you can submit to what's wrong. Now, if the golden child decides to submit to what's wrong and allow the rage and entitlement and um, grandiose self, self, sense of self, excuse me, to override anything else and override the voice of the Lord, then of course they're gonna turn into the narcissist that they are likely to become and the dangerous individual that society will have to deal with. But there's also the other option for the golden child. The golden child can say, God help me, help me. Well, however that would mean, whatever that would mean to the golden child at the time, help me to see things the way you want me to see them, Lord. 
Help me to understand why I have all this anger and rage and entitlement. Help me to see the larger picture the way that you want me to see it, Lord. Help me to not be overcome by this sin and this demonic force that's trying to take me over. The golden child has an option to have a choice. So even though they're more, more likely to become a narcissist, it doesn't have to turn out that way. And even though the scapegoat child, the path that the enemy intended for them was for them to be um, broken and a useless person in society because they have no self-esteem, God intervened in my life and in the lives of many scapegoats so I believe God can intervene in the life of a golden child too. But you have to be humble and you have to have understanding that you're really not all that. It was just a game the narcissist was playing and you were just part of the game, golden child. <laughs> and when you can start to see that, when the golden child can see beyond themselves, they can get out of their own ego they will see that God is there, just like he was for Cain, saying, you have a choice. You don't have to allow sin to take you over. Humble yourself and cry out to God. I know I did it, and I'm so happy that God was there for me all those times, and he continues to be there for me. So I'm just sharing my take on how the golden child is created, a monster's created when the golden child is made, but they don't have to stay that way. Just like I'm no longer the scapegoat, I'm a child of the Most High God, and I am a survivor. That means I'm a winner, and I praise God for it. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.